Hello, my beautiful computer science students. Welcome to another lesson in Unit 7. My name is Goldie, and we are going to be going through Lesson 5, Searching Arrays and Array Lists. And we're going to be talking about two um, specific searching algorithms in this lesson, the linear search and the binary search. So first up is a linear search. Um, a linear search, the algorithm for it can really apply to a lot of diff different scenarios we're going to encounter. Um, we have gone over the linear search for an array, but we're going to recap that here in this lesson. Um, we're going to talk about linear search for an array list, um, but you can even apply this algorithm to strings. And I believe we have in several examples that we've done previously, we just really haven't called it the linear search. But this algorithm is very useful across multiple, um, multiple encounters we have in computer science. So the basic algorithm, step by step, we start at the beginning of a set of data, whether that's an array, array list, string, whatever it may be. Um, we go through and we check, okay, if we're at this current value, starting at the beginning, is this the value we are looking for? If it is, perfect, we're done. We don't have to go farther. We found the value we are looking for. If it's not the value we're looking for, we just move on to the next item, right? And we repeat this step. We loop through the array, array list, whatever it may be, until we reach the end of the set or until we find what we're looking for. So those are the basic steps, and this is the linear search algorithm we covered in Unit 6. So I made a method here, just a static method called search linear, um, and this is just for a list of integers. So you can see we're passing the method a number that we are looking for, as well as the list we are going to look through. We have our usual list heading, and then we check to see if... Um, the number we are looking for is equal to the current element, okay? And for an array, that's how we access the current element. It's been a hot second since we've talked about arrays, so remember that that's how we access array elements as opposed to an array list that we'll see in a moment. And if they are equal, we return i, okay? Which i represents the current index we are on. If we go through this whole loop and we don't find it, we then return a negative one, indicating that we never found what we were looking for, okay? Now, I'm gonna highlight these points because to linear search for an array list, if we were to do this algorithm and write our own linear search for an array list, these would be the three pieces that change, right? So we would pass an array list to this method. Um, we know that for an array list, we don't have a dot length. For an array list, we have a dot size, and it's a method. And then the last piece is accessing array list elements. We don't access array list elements with square brackets. We access them with, again, a method. So the linear search for an array list is going to look the exact same. It's just instead of these three pieces, we just modify them for our array list syntax. And that's what this is going to look like. So we pass it an array list. Remember, this is how we pass an array list as a parameter. In our loop, we have list.size, and then to access the array elements, we use the .get method, okay? And that's the linear search for an array list. Now, we talk about how array list um, has a bunch of methods that we use. We've gone over the six that are covered on the AP exam, but I told you that there's actually a lot of more lot more methods for an array list you can look them up um, there's actually several methods that do a search for us in an array list uh, we don't cover them because they aren't specifically stated that they're going to be on the AP exam but they do make linear searches much easier okay um, they're going to be the dot index of and we actually have something like this for strings. Right? We have a dot index of for strings that will be on the AP exam. So we have covered this method for strings. We have it for array list too. Okay? So dot index of, let's say I was looking for num. So list, so in this example, list dot index of num will return the index or a negative one if it's not found of the first location of num. It's a built-in method, and that is, that's a linear search. 
um, that index of. It also there's also a method too called contains, which will just return true or false um, if the list contains the value you are looking for. Index of tends to be a bit more preferred because you know if it contains it if it returns a number or it doesn't contain it if it returns a negative one. So usually they use index of, but there's also a dot contains method as well. These two methods are not on the AP exam. They're not on your formula sheet. So um, they're not going to come up. Um, if you did need to do a linear search for an array list, uh, you would probably need to code your own, which as you can see here is pretty straightforward. Okay? But those other methods exist. Just to let you know. Okay, so the linear search is the easiest searching algorithm. Okay, right? We start at the beginning and we go through one by one. Um, but it can be slow, especially if you have large data sets, a big array, a big array list. Um, it, can, it can bog down the computer quite a bit. So we do have other searching algorithms, and the one that's preferred actually over the linear search in most scenarios is called the binary search. It's um, massively more efficient for large data sets. And we haven't seen the binary search yet. We haven't seen it with an array, and we definitely haven't seen it with an array list yet. So we're going to cover both arrays and array list binary search right now. Okay. Binary search. So again, it's a very efficient way um, to find a specific element. The thing with the binary search, it has to be sorted. Okay, so I'm going to say array, um, just to use an array example, but we'll go over how to do the binary search with the array list too. But right now I'm going to be talking about arrays, so I'm going to use that verbiage here. So sorted arrays, the binary search it needs to be sorted first. That was not the case with a linear search. In a linear search, it does not have to be sorted at all, because you start at the beginning and you just, you just go through. Um, the binary search does have to be sorted. And there are going to be sorting algorithms that we're going to learn in this class, actually in the next couple lessons. Um, but for right now, the binary search, we're going to assume our arrays are already sorted. But that is a very important piece for the binary search. It has to be sorted. And once your array is sorted, the way it essentially works is you cut your array in half and you figure out, okay, which half is the element I'm searching for in? Is it in the lower half or is it in the upper half? Um, if it's in the lower half, then you can basically ignore the upper half, right? And you say, okay, I know it's in the lower half. I don't have to look in the upper half at all. Let me focus on the lower half. And I repeat that process, right? I keep dividing my arrays until I reach that one specific element that I'm looking for. In a nutshell, that's what the algorithm is going to do. Um, but we're going to go through the specifics of the algorithm by looking at an example array. So here is numlist. So I kind of made it big so we can get a good idea of what this is going to look like. See, notice how it's sorted. It's a sort of sorted list of numbers. Um, if we were dealing with a list of strings, we would need it to be in um, some sort of alphabetical order. Um, but with numbers, it's numerical order, right? So we're going to go through the algorithm for this by finding the value 39 using that binary search algorithm. Okay, binary search. Now, with this, with a linear search, we would have to look, okay, we started at the beginning. Is it 10? No. Is it 12? No. Is it 15? Right? For a linear search, we have to go through one by one, not skipping ele any elements and look through until we reach 39. Binary search is going to be different. Here's the algorithm for it. Okay. Step one, we find the lowest index, middle index, and the highest index. Okay. So in our example, and I put the indice, indices up here in green, um, our lowest index is index zero. Lowest index is always zero, right? Our highest index in this example is 10, okay? Which is always going to be our array dot length, okay? Um, now to find the middle value, here I have an odd number of elements. So I'm going to have a distinct middle value, okay? Um, if your list has an even number of elements, the middle will be the lower value between the two numbers, is usually how the array list is coded, right? So here, what's my middle? Okay, so if I just look, da, 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 five is my middle, right? I have five less, or excuse me, five above, five less. Index five is my middle index. Now, I can't 
have the computer just look and find the middle, right? I have to code it. So the math behind that, we take the low index plus the high index, and then we divide by two. Okay? And that's integer division. So that's why the middle will be the lower value between two middle numbers. Okay? So if you have an even list, right, your middle is going to be the lower value. Okay? So technically, like the middle would be between elements 5 and 6, but because of integer division and truncation, it's going to be the lower value. Okay? So just keep that in mind. Not in this example, but something to keep in mind for that binary search algorithm. But this is the math for how we find the middle index. We take the low index and the high index, add them together, and then divide by 2. So in our example, 10 divided by 2 is 5. That's our middle index right there. Okay? So that's the first thing you're going to do. Step one. The next thing you're going to do, you're going to decide if the element in the middle index is equal to less than or greater than the element you are looking for. Okay? And here are our scenarios. If the element you are trying to find is equal to the element at the middle index, you're done, right? So if you find, okay, this is my middle index, and hey, look, that's the number I was looking for. Perfect. I'm done. Let me return that index. Okay? Um, if it's not, though, you have two scenarios. Either the number you are looking for is higher than this element, or the number you are looking for is lower than this element. Okay? If the element you are trying to find is smaller than the middle index, so if you are trying to find a number less than 29, you know that the element will be in the lower half of the list. Okay? And that means you can ignore the upper half. Right? You've decided it's not there, so you can focus on the lower half. If the element you are trying to find is larger than the element at the middle index, you know the element will be in the higher half of this list. And that's what we find with our example here. The element at index 5 is 29. 39 in our example is what we are trying to find. And since 39 is larger than 29, we know that it's going to be in the higher half of the list. Okay, so I put a big X there saying we basically ignore that whole beginning half of our num list, okay, because it's not there. So your step three, once you've made that decision and you know, okay, is it lower half, upper half, or target element, right? Um, you change your low, high, and middle index to reflect the fact that you now know what half of the array list you are working with. So if the element you're trying to find is the lower half, your high index will become your middle index. In our example here, we're right here. If the element we are trying to find is in the higher half of the list, which it is, your low index will become your middle index, okay? Meaning that, or excuse me, your middle index will become your low index. Oof. Sorry, I switched that. Low index, okay? Meaning that, okay, this five was my middle, um, was my middle index, and now that I know it's in the upper half, this is going to become my new low index. Okay? Um, but uh, there's a little bit more to it. I know that, okay, this, if this is my new low index, I actually already know that my element is not going to be there, right? Because I've checked. 29 is an element I'm looking for. So this becomes my new low index, but I'm actually going to add one because I already know it's not going to be there either. Okay? So that this becomes my new low, and this is actually going to just remain my high index. 10, index 10 doesn't change at all. So in our example, 39, is, it's in the higher half of the list. So our lowest index becomes middle plus 1. It becomes a 6. Okay. So our high index stays the same. And our middle index can then be recalculated into 6 plus 10 divided by 2 to be an 8. And that's going to be our middle index now. So our low index changed, our middle index changed, our high index stayed the same. If we were looking in the other lower half, our low index would stay the same, our middle index, or excuse me, our high index would change, and then our middle index would also change. Okay, so one stays the same, the other two's change. And we repeat the steps we just went through until we are done, until the element at your middle index is equal to the element you are trying to find. So in our example, I check my middle index 
and there you are. That was the number I was trying to find the whole time. I would return index 8 because I have located what I was looking for. Hi. What I was looking for. Now I say we repeat until we're done. So we keep trying to find that element at the middle index until, until we are finished. Um, what happens if we don't find it? Okay. If we get to a scenario where basically my low and my high index switch places. So when my low index um, becomes higher than my highest index or vice versa, right? Then that means I've gone through the whole list and I've narrowed it down to the point where I didn't find anything, right? Uh, so I always like to use this visualization, right? So I have my low index and my high index and my binary search, I keep changing that low and high to try to zero in on a number. If I get to the point where I change it and they're either equal or they they switch places, right? My low becomes higher than my low. You see, the, that's why the visual helps. <laughs> and they switch places. I didn't find it, okay? I've narrowed it down. I've changed my high and my low to the point where I never found it. And that's when we would return the negative one indicating that it hadn't been found. And that's my, that's my algorithm for it, okay? That is my algorithm. So, so how many iterations of that algorithm will it take to find 39? What we just did, it took two loops, right? It took us doing, okay, this is my middle, it's higher, this is my middle, and I found it. Two loops. Okay, two loops to find 39, very quick. How many iterations of a linear search would it have taken? Um, much more, right? <laughs> so it checks, not it, so it loops. Okay, so each arrow represents what a loop would be. It would have been seven loops to find, oh, <laughs> eight loops. What did I do? I stopped at 38, goodness me. Eight loops to find 39, huh? seven loops to find 38, <laughs> but eight loops to find, um, eight loops to find that 39. Okay. So when we're talking about algorithm efficiency, in other words, how, um, how quickly can I find what I'm looking for? The binary search found it much more quickly, two loops, as opposed to eight loops to find 39. Okay. So here's going to be the binary search code for an, uh, an array, all right? And then we'll change it to match an array list. But I have my method header, public static int. It's going to return either the index of where we found the value or a negative one if we didn't find it. Called search binary. We pass it the number we're looking for. <coughs> Excuse me. And we pass it the list we're going to be looking through. Step one. Um, was find low, high, and middle. I'm going to wait to find the middle in a moment. Let me just define low and high. Low is always zero, and the highest index is always the length of the list minus one. Okay, so you'll start off defining those two. And then we're going to go through, oops, I kind of messed this up. That's fine. Um, we're going to go through using a while loop. Okay. <coughs> we don't know how long we have to search. It depends on how big it is, right? But remember, we want to go while my low is less than my high, I want to keep searching, okay, right? I want to keep cutting down that array until they pass, okay? Until the high becomes less than the low. So I want to keep going however long that takes. Inside that while loop, this is where I'm going to define um, my, middle, um, my middle index, where I take the low plus the high divided by two. Okay, because the middle is actually going to change every time. So I want to put that inside of my while loop um, because it's going to change every time I iterate. The middle element will change. Sometimes the low will change, sometimes the high will change, but the middle always changes. From there, I want to check to see if that middle element is equal to what I'm searching for. So that's going to be my first check because if it is, then I want to be done and I want to return middle. I want to return that middle index. So if that middle element is equal to the element I'm trying to find, return middle. Perfect, I'm done. Okay. But then there's the other two scenarios. Okay. What if it's not, right? Else if the 
middle element is larger than the number you are looking for. So if you have your middle element and it's larger than the number you're looking for, meaning that the element you are trying to find is in the lower half of the list. If the element's in the lower half of the list, we want to change our high index, and that's going to become our middle minus one. Otherwise, we change our low index, and that's what we did in our example. We changed our low index to be middle plus one because the element we were searching for ended up being greater than our middle index, or our middle, the element at our middle index. And that's, our, that's what's in our loop. And at the very end, if we go through that whole loop, <coughs> if we go through that whole loop and we don't find what we're looking for, we want to return that negative one. So the ArrayList code is going to change just a couple things from this array. And I've um, kind of bolded them in green there. Those are the four things that are going to change um, when we write the code for a binary search for ArrayList. So you can see most of it stays the same because it's the same algorithm, right? Um, it's just the way we access some of these elements are going to change. So obviously, we're going to pass it in ArrayList right here. Um, we're going to access with dot size and then to get the middle index we're going to use the dot get and then in parentheses put the middle. So those are the four things that are going to change, um, the only four things that change between the array and array list binary search algorithm. Okay, So you can see those right there. Feel free to pause if you have to um, copy this down or want to copy this down. We're going to finish this set of notes with just a couple questions about the differences between when a linear search would be preferred and when a binary search would be preferred. Okay. If we have, so this question, right, six questions here for the following, determine which situation would be better for a linear search or a binary search. If we have an ordered list of numbers, a binary search is our best option. Okay. An unordered list of numbers would be linear. Okay, that's the only caveat of a binary search is it has to be sorted first. If you have an unordered list, you can use a sorting algorithm on it and then do a binary search. Um, it just depends on the situ situation, situation. <laughs> and which one would be better. Okay, If we have an ordered list of numbers where the number you were looking for was the first element, the linear search would be more efficient. It would find it right away if it was the first element. A binary search, because it starts in the middle and narrows it down, it would take a little bit longer to find a number in the first position. A linear search would find it right away. If the number we were looking for was the middle element in an ordered list, then hopefully you know binary search would find it right away if it was the middle element. If it was an ordered list of numbers and what we were trying to find was the last element, a binary search would still be more efficient. A linear search would have to go through the entire list to find that element. And a binary search would only have to do a couple of, of, um, um, couple of loops to reach the end and find that element. And then the last one, if we have a very large data set, the binary is preferred. Okay. For small data sets, um, like the example we just did, for instance, um, the difference between two loops and eight loops is almost negligible in terms of time that the computer would use to find it. Okay? So when we talk about very large data sets, we're talking about warehouses of data. And it's really going to make a noticeable difference in whether you use a binary search or a linear search. Okay. And that brings us to the end of our lesson today on linear search and binary search. So thank you guys so much for following along and I will see you next time.